and you see here the hand of my colleague in the lab. A blue hand, yeah. okay. And, and if I were to put my hand here, you can see I, I can be pointing to different aspects. Or if I have a brochure here, I can also use this, a, a pinpoint device. It could be a pen. Hi there, Mike. Hi, Rachel. How are you? Not bad, how about you? I'm excellent, it's so good to see your face. Yeah, it's good to see you too. <laughs> Awesome. Well, uh, welcome to your test drive. Um, this is going to enable you to see and feel what it's like to drive a beam. Let's try it. Okay. Go ahead and undock yourself by moving forward. There we go. And just take Ooh, a little wow. walk with me. We're going to go towards this mirror over here. And that used to be, I used to be shaped more like this. Wow. Okay. Oh. And to give you an idea of what that looks like on the inside of me, we have another view on this app. So I can switch to this, and here you can see that, you know, all the tissues are looking quite happy. But if I go back to what I used to be doing at baseline, all, this was how I used to be all the time. Ta-da, you know, yes. gymnastics gone wrong. Yeah. And <laughs> I had to train myself to elongate my back. And then inhale, reach the left arm straight up. Coming into half moon, which is a balanced pose. So on your exhale, you're gonna bend your right knee, look out in front of your right foot, and then step into your right foot and your right hand. Your left limbs lift off the floor. Flex your left foot, reach through your left fingers. You can look down or forward or up. So you have quite a challenge yourself. What's your yeah. story? How did you come to this? Um, I just got tired of doing something I really didn't have a passion for. And I know I knew that training was one of my main things I love, but like I said before, I had to get myself in the right shape. I don't want to preach something that I wasn't doing, so I spent time on my body first, and it just kind of came with a passion. You know, I didn't get my certification and was still working the nine to five, and then all of a sudden I was like, I'm gonna step away from my nine to five because I have no passion in that field. Little did I know that I got into the best ballet school in all of the world. The feeder school of George Balanchine's New York City Ballet. It was so amazing. I came in touch with what I'd like to share. Your heart reach out through your arm and out through your foot simultaneously. Come on down. I'm gonna come back and sit on my toes for a moment and remind you if you're not having fun in this class you're just not taking it serious enough. Okay so here are our, our three contestants Hugh Mungus, Confetti Cake, and John Shepard. John Shepard. Okay, so these three contestants are going to be battling out for a new best friend, Linda over here. Hello. Uh, I need a friend who likes to be outdoors and is an early riser. I'm, I'm huge into uh, sunrises and uh, who isn't afraid to uh, get dirty in the dirt, mostly scratching for seeds. Greasy, grimy, gooey, wet paper is good for the green cart. Compost soiled paper.
takes one minute to make a straw, five minutes to use a straw, and that straw will remain on this planet forever. 500 million single-use plastic straws are used and discarded every day in the USA. Most of these end up in the ocean. If we don't do something soon, plastic will outweigh fish by the year 2050. We are here for three reasons. Gun reform, school safety, and community activism. That being said, we must not forget the seriousness of why we are here. This is bigger than me, bigger than us, bigger than Parkland. What we choose to do at this moment will determine the future safety of our children, siblings, and grandchildren. We have a hit hearing coming up in DC. Um, on the Hill uh, where we invited, I think, about 400 Congress and Senate um, staff people uh, to support these two bills on maternal mortality that have been on the floor, actually, for over a year and haven't moved due to the present circumstances mm -hmm. on the Hill. Having a rise of support to the Libertarian Party would actually help um, finish the great love America's experiencing right now because as we know, libertarians don't really identify as, as right or left. They're, they just change depending on the issue. So I feel like, for example, on a certain issue, they would vote with the Democrats, and the issue, that law would get passed. On a different one, for example, they could vote with Republicans, and that specific law would get passed. But the other problems include a shutdown or decrease in early voting in many states, shutdown of polling places. 858 right. polling places in this country were shut down before the 2016 election. Elimination of DMVs in certain states, mm -hmm. in Alabama, that was a huge problem. Shutdown or increase, increasing difficulty of voter registration. Just having a voter registration drive in certain states proved impossible, like Florida. And we also reached a new milestone in San Mateo County elections history in that on Friday, our registered voter number exceeded 400. We elapsed 400,000 registered voters uh, in San Mateo County, and that's a first, uh, all indicative of a, a very active electorate and participating in this election. As a kid, you don't have a good engagement in your community, but with new voices that made me um, play a part in my community, not only as just a kid in Redwood City, but it was more of a, a voice in Redwood City, if that makes any sense. It was as a way of like, getting issues in your community and putting that into a video, editing it. I had a long conversation with one of my um, uh, college counselors, and he told me, like, what do you want to do? He's like, Pedro, what do you want to do? And I was like, I just, uh, maybe I want to make movies. He's like, oh, then go make movies. He's like, he's like, he's like to go do that then. And it was uh, like all documentaries. We, you know, you try to, to tell a story. And in this case, it's the story of King from the time when he is young and just going into the ministry, his time in Montgomery, all the way to Memphis. He just come here from Atlanta. He was checking into the hotel. And uh, there was a certain joy there because we, we were really kind of rolling. I hadn't seen him that jovial and clowning and, and, and free in a long time. He was in a, just in a very playful mood. One of the reporters said, now, Andy, I know you don't like us getting in your face with the camera, but I got to keep a camera on Dr. King, because if he gets shot and I don't get a picture of it, I'll lose my job. Martin thought that was funny. And he said, now, I'll tell you what's going to happen. They might take a shot at me, but one of you all will be jumping in front and take it for me. 's situation at the foster home, my coming out in the fraternity were examples of where I had to turn fear into faith. And now I have some questions for you that I'd like you to consider. Where is fear in your life? Where does faith come in to help you deal with that fear? What are you afraid of? Here's what I know. 
fear and faith cannot occupy the same space at the same time. Many of us know your story, but it's so inspiring. Could you just give us a little bit of background? Sure. March 31st, 2011, um, two other para I was a paramedic. Two other paramedics and I drove down to Los Angeles to watch the Giants play the Dodgers. The Giants are my team. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. Nice. <laughs> Cool. And the Giants lost that game. We set our love on the field, and we're walking back to the car, and somebody heard, or I heard somebody running up behind us, and I turned to look, and I got hit in the head and went down. Oh. And almost nine, almost ten months later, I came out of my coma. With a variety of learning disabilities and obsessive compulsive behaviors, Jonathan was different, and he was bullied in school. This led him to cultivate a rich inner life, which along with a life-changing discovery, eventually proved to have a very silver lining. He's now a successful voiceover actor. Having earned his coveted Actors Union card, he lists among his credits the voiceover for Great America. And the voices of many other characters on apps, video games, toys, and audiobooks. But his most important voice is the voice of hope and optimism for children on the autism spectrum and their parents. Okay, everybody has to do this. Okay, everybody, Viking clap on three. One, two. Oh, yeah. Besides that, that off time. Well, whatever. Besides the Viking clap, besides the crazy names, besides the biggest kicker of all, the head coach calling the ultras together in a bar outside the stadium and telling them who's going to be starting, the tactics and formation they're going to be using, and some other information. That's ridiculous. I know other team in the world would even think about that. That is how confident not only Iceland is, also showing how big the support is. Have you noticed that landlords are warming up to the idea of having cannabis-related tenants? And if so, what have you experienced? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> the landlords really were one of the first ancillary businesses to open up to the new commercial cannabis. You know. There was a medical marijuana market. They had to have real estate. Um, and we are seeing a pattern of banking institutions, insurance providers, either looking the other way or just pretend or acting as if no one's ever going to look at their books. Right. So um, landlords, I mean, the entire culture, I think, is embracing cannabis, commercial cannabis, more and more and more, and particularly with landlords. But guess what? I can still do it. Oh. Can't beat me! Hail to Proteus, my progenitor. So I greet your tomb each time I leave and return to the palace. I have left the hunt. For I hear some Greek has slipped through my net to steal my Helen. If he's caught, he dies. Let me show you how to tie a knot. Right. Right. You take your loop, all right? Put the rope through the big hole, over underneath your palm and the rope, goes through the little hole. There you go. She said, welcome, my good friend, despair.
drawbridge was established way, way back in about the 1880s and it came to being only because two very wealthy men in San Francisco wanted to build a railroad from the East Bay down to Santa Cruz and the drawbridge island, which was called Saline Island at the time, was in the way. So they, there was a lot of boat traffic around the island and they needed to put, construct a, a drawbridge at each end of the island so that the tra boat traffic and the trains did not interfere with one another. This is Eleanor Otto. It would be an understatement to say the impact she's had on my generation is immeasurable. She is one of the last living Rosie the Riveters. You might remember the recruiting poster. Yeah, that one. My name is Abigail Spittler. That's me in the dress uniform. I am a cadet in Civil Air Patrol, aiming to be a pilot in the Air Force. It was my great pleasure to interview Eleanor at the March Air Museum in Riverside, California. Yes, it's only a canvas sky hanging over a muslin tree. But it wouldn't be make-believe if you believed in me. Or without your love, it's a honky-tonk parade. Or without your love, it's the melody playing in a penny arcade. So that was an example of a harmony that would go a third up. And now let's um, show them how to do a harmony a third down. So once again, give me a note. Let's rip this thing. Walk by you in the street, I think. Maybe there's another planet we meet and I don't mess it up like I did in this one. See photos on the internet Is she a girl or a girlfriend? You must know it kills me We both know she's pretty But how are you? Um, and this feud's been going on for 10 years Yeah, but I don't understand how uh, Michelle Nichols has been working uh, On TV and in movies And she's just a during, during And movies. she's still performing Yeah, she's so just what, a Under what condition does the son believe that she can no longer live in the house on her own when she can afford to have all the workers, all the helpers, everything she wants anyway? I don't well, understand Well, not that. only that, she's still making movies. I know. And he's claiming she doesn't have mental capabilities. Well, I got to tell you, she remembers lines. <laughs> you know, if so. you're going to remember lines, you got to have some <laughs> mental capabilities. The door's back there, sir. There lies your way. You can be jogging before it gets late. For me... I'll not be going until I'm ready to go. Oh, you'd prove such an arrogant servant if you think you can assume you're making all the decisions. Oh, my sweet, sweet Kate, <sighs> please don't be angry. I will be angry, and it's really none of your business. Katerina. Uh, father, be quiet. Hey. He will do what I say do, and I will go when I'm ready to go. Game on. <laughs> I want candy. But we're in an art store. Because why do you always drag me here? Because it's good for you. You are a brilliant artist. Yeah, but art is so dumb. <laughs> like, I just can't <laughs> even. <laughs> I have to spread my legs. I'm just splits over how much I hate art. <laughs> Maybe we could build you. So now I'm going to put the blue in. And you have to remember if you do it this way with the water down first, it's going to dilute your color even more. So you have to kind of compensate for that. But here, see how the it just flows. And it will only go where the water is. 
why is art good for the brain? Oh, good for the brain. Well, it stimulates the brain in a different way, obviously. Very different than if you sit in front of a computer screen and look at, look at this. And uh, one of my mission was that when I start the art gallery here in Silicon Valley, I knew I had a very, very different group of people I want to attract to art, and I want to actually educate about art. It's more about education. Yeah. So for today, what our focus is going to be is about feelings. Let's think about some, just some general feelings. What, what are some feeling words? And then we'll, we'll make a little brainstorm list. Happy? Angry. Angry? Embarrassed, yeah. All right, one more. Jealous. Jealous. Okay, that's a good, that's a good list. Um, we do a lot of work with strengths in addition to feelings, and so we always like to remind both teachers and students that feelings come and go. Everything, every feeling is okay, and it's what you do with it that's important. So perhaps some of our feelings have shifted from the beginning sure. of this segment to now. So if that's the case. Go ahead and pick a new feeling rock. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everyone want a chance to say <clears throat> what they've got on their rock? Oh, go ahead. I will gladly start. Yeah. I am grateful on my rock, mm -hmm. and I'm really grateful that we had the opportunity to come and talk about mm -hmm. this today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that the internet and social media are the most powerful tools for communication we've developed since the printing press. They have so democratized the ability to reach a mass audience. It used to be that in order to reach a large number of people, you had to be rich enough to own a newspaper or to get a broadcast license. Now, anybody with a smartphone can reach a mass audience. You don't even need that. It just kind of hit me as we're talking here. You know, in Turkey, even to this day, I'm sure we probably couldn't have this type of conversation mm. openly. Wow. In, in, in public TV because there's still a lot of you know oppression on that mm. people having freedom of speech and um, you know I never take it lightly or for granted the opportunity that we have here mm. to be able to say and to be able to really you know if you set your mind you can achieve anything and I'm living proof of that my parents are living proof of that and if I can motivate other people to mm. to do it then you know mm. that in itself is an American dream mm. to me